chapter 4. We'll be reading verses 15 through 18. Hallelujah. Glory to your wonderful and magnificent name, Lord. The epistle, the second epistle written to the church at Corinth by the Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 15 through 18. And the Bible declares, makes this declaration, for all things are for your sakes. If I don't say anything else, you need to be able to gravitate back to that one statement made by Paul to the church at Corinth. He said, for all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. A weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Let all of the people say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. For a few moments on this morning, I would like to encourage the hearers and the doers of the word of God with this topic, good trouble. Preaching from the topic on this morning, good trouble. Trouble is defined, if you do any type of research, trouble is defined as difficulty or problems. And depending upon the situation and depending upon the circumstance that you're dealing with, trouble also brings along with it not just difficulties and problems, but it brings along with it anxiety and distress. And if your childhood was like mine, I grew up in Southern California back in the 70s. And trouble was not a friend of mine. Hallelujah. Some of, some of you all trouble may have been your friend. You and you and trouble used to get along just well and dandy. But I grew up with a mother who did not spare the rod. And so when trouble lingered around me or made its way around me, trouble also came with some additional difficulties. Not only did trouble come in all shapes, sizes, and colors, but when you got in trouble, trouble brought along more trouble. I told you all, a little bit ago that whoopings came with my trouble. Hallelujah. This discipline came with my trouble. Not only did discipline come, but uh, when Mother McCown would grab the rod or grab the stinching cord or grab the switch or grab the shoe, pain came with my trouble as well. It sounds like I'm the only one who had to deal with this, but it's okay. I'll keep telling you my story on this morning. I can remember it like yesterday because it's amazing to me that trouble comes on many different levels and trouble also resulted in different many forms of punishment hallelujah acting up at home depending on how your mom felt at the moment in time usually if she didn't feel like whooping you it would muster up a warning and you all know what this warning is don't make me have to get up from here hallelujah that was the warning that if you as that if she had to get up that trouble was coming along of the way hallelujah and don't let me have to come up there so not only was don't let me have to get up but don't let me have to come up there either hallelujah and it's amazing that sometimes those warnings would just settle at warnings. But I learned that warnings at home was different than the warnings that you would receive at someone else's house. Hallelujah. Acting up at home may have brought you a warning, but doing the same exact thing at someone else's house, hallelujah, would bring a drastically different result than the warning that you got at home. Hallelujah. I came to find out later on it's not that the problem, that the issue, the trouble was different, is that you you forsook their warning when they told you don't go over there acting up don't you do something that you know you're not so, supposed to be doing so the ramping up of the the punishment came and not just from being disobedient but it came from embarrassing your mama or your daddy at someone else's house hallelujah but nine times out of ten i tell you that you were forewarned so trouble was lingering because you diso 
disobeyed your parents. Hallelujah. While growing up, trouble and good had nothing to do with one another. Trouble always brought about difficulties. Hallelujah. It brought about problems. Hallelujah. The Bible says man that is born of a woman is a few days old. And guess what? Just a full few days old and they're already full of trouble. But what amazes me is, is that we learn what trouble is, uh, what it was as a young child. But guess what, you all? Even when we got older, hallelujah, trouble still came along the way. So even as an adult, trouble yielded the same results as it was in, in my younger days. And so it does not matter you all at the end of the day whether you're young or old trouble always yields the same results the bible tells us in romans uh, chapter 6 verse 23 that the wages of sin is death and that's what trouble lingers around. L trouble always results in the death of something. So no matter how you say it and no matter how you lay it out, when we do things uh, that satisfies the lust of the flesh, guess what you all? It always brings about trouble that will result in death in your life. Hallelujah. I said I put down here late nights. Guess what? Trouble came along with late nights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Partying all night long. Guess what? It ended up leading to trouble if you decided that you were going to drink a, a sip here and a sip there they always ended up in trouble if you decided that you were going to lay with someone promiscuity fornication whatever it might have been it always yielded the result of trouble if you decided you was going to smoke a toke or do whatever sniff a, a hit whatever it was it always led to trouble if your tongue was not strong and did not keep to itself you had a loose tongue at the end of the day a uh, trouble always came about with a loose tongue if you decided that you were going to rush ahead and not allow patience to be your purpose impatience always led to trouble being disobedient led to trouble and if I just kept going on the list could go on and on but at the end of the day trouble always landed you in trouble Hallelujah. They all resulted in all of those things that I named. They resulted in temporary satisfaction. For the moment, it was wonderful. For the moment, it led to some joy. For the moment, it piqued my interest. But when I woke up the next day, hallelujah, and I did not know who that was next to me. When I woke up the next day, hallelujah, and my brain was feeling funny and I couldn't stand up straight. When I woke up the next morning and called in sick to work, hallelujah, I realized that the temporary satisfaction wasn't really worth it all at all, hallelujah. 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 Temporary things. Trouble always led to temporary satisfaction, but it led to long term disappointment. And if we look back over our pre Christian life, if you all can be truthful with yourselves, our pre Christian life was filled with trouble. Hallelujah. And all of that trouble never worked together for our good. How can trouble be? good. After years of life of consistently ending in frustration, it's amazing to me that changing partners brought a fresh aura, brought about a fresh outlook on life when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. When I was doomed before I knew him, when I allowed Jesus to come into my heart and save me, he gave me a new opportunity to get my life straight and allow new things to come my way. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 declares, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hallelujah. And when I became new, the Bible declares that all things uh, are passed away and behold all things became as new. And so my joy was new because the joy of the Lord was my strength. Hallelujah. I was no longer weak because I was able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. The weapons may form against me but because God God is my king and he is my authority and Christ was my savior. The weapons may form but they would no longer prosper. Hallelujah. When Christ came into my life, it seems like all my troubles were gone. Hallelujah. But help us Holy Ghost today. 
Even when Jesus came into our lives, at the end of the day, trouble appeared to have been gone, but trouble was still lingering our way. Hallelujah. Little did we know that trouble goes to, comes with us even when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. The Bible declares in John chapter 16 and 33, in this life ye shall have tribulations. Hallelujah. Tribulation means that you're going to have trouble. Psalm 34 and 19 tells us that many other afflictions are the right of the righteous. That means if, if I'm afflicted and I'm righteous, then I'm going to have some trouble. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and 18, the beginning says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, meaning that at some point in time, I'm going to deal with trouble. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 12 tells us, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That means just a couple of scriptures there reminds us that trouble comes with us even when we change partners from fellowshipping and being in cahoots with the devil and then and stopping allowing Jesus to become our personal Lord and Savior and going into this walk, this Christian walk with him on our sides. But it's amazing to me that sometimes it seems like our Christian walk may be a little bit more difficult than our carnal work, our carnal walk. Help me, Holy Ghost, today. Y'all looking at me strange but I'm sure that each and every one of you all have looked back and said man I'm going through something in my life and I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through and I didn't go through this trial I didn't go through this affliction I didn't go through this heartache when I allowed the devil to be my God and when I was going in the world I didn't have to deal with these things that I'm dealing with now but you all got to understand that each round goes higher and higher hallelujah and when we and when you were on the devil's playing field he already knew he had you so it didn't matter the things that he threw your way he knew that you would accept anything that he threw your way but when Christ came into your heart your mindset began to change hallelujah your outlook in life began to change your focus began to change we talked about that in Sunday school on this morning hallelujah your mission changed and so when your mission changed the enemy decided that he was going to come up against you any way he could so that he can steal and to kill and to destroy and so when we look back sometimes it looks like we were better off before Christ came into our lives but Peter wanted to make sure that we didn't make this mistake hallelujah uh, because again we don't look at those things that are seen we look at those things that are not seen and when we look by our eyes by our corner eyes we really don't see the true story so Peter wanted us to know in first Peter 3 and 14 in verse number 17 he said it's better to suffer for good than to suffer for evil. He said in verse number 14 in 1 Peter 3, he says, but and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, he says, happy are ye, hallelujah, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. He went on to say in verse number 17, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing, that you go through trouble for well-doing than to go through trouble uh, for things that are evil or those things that are ungodly. What I'll stop by here on today is to let someone know you may be troubled on every side and dealing with things in your life, but you've got to know that the word of God and the promises of God for you are yea and amen. I need you all to understand that the things that we go through in life are not just by happenstance. Hallelujah. So Paul understood that the people of God may go through some discouragements during their lifetime. He understood uh, that the people of God would go through some heartache and some pain and they needed something to hold on to. They needed something uh, to sure remind them that God is true to his word. They needed something that they can look back over and read over and over again so that that word that we hide in our hearts will help us that we might not sin against God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse number 15. Uh, in the first verse, verse 15, it reminds us that there is purpose to my trouble. Tell yourself there is purpose to my trouble. It says in verse number 15, for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might be through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. What this simply states is that we shall face challenges and we shall face difficulties and in life we will go through some changes but we've got to know without a shadow of a doubt that everything that comes our way is not just for our sakes but it's going to get God the glory out of our 
our lives. What do you mean, Pastor? That means um, that the trials and the tribulations that you're facing today, they're not here to kill you. Hallelujah. They're not here to destroy you, but they're so that God will get glory out of your situation and God will get the glory out of your life. What a pertinent Sunday school lesson for us to deal with Abram, Abraham on this morning as he took his son Isaac up unto the mountain. Hallelujah. God told him to take his son up to the mountain so that he can sacrifice his son on uh, at the, on the mountain for God's glory. Hallelujah. And do you all not know that when you look through the scripture, you didn't find that Sarai uh, went with Abraham and Isaac up on the mountain. That means uh, that the woman of God did not want to go up into the mountain to see her son to be uh, sacrificed on the mountain. But you've got to know that because we serve a God that's not here to kill us and we serve a God that's not here to destroy us, that the things that he allows to come our way are for a purpose. Hallelujah. Sister Rob's had a difficulty a couple of weeks ago with seeing. Hallelujah. It could have looked like all thing and all hope was gone. Hallelujah. And it's amazing that she's in the sanctuary on this morning. Uh, she drove here by herself with her kids. That means uh, that the suffering that she had to deal with a couple of weeks ago, uh, they were not meant to kill her, but they were meant to God to get the glory out of her situation and out of her circumstances. It says in the scriptures today that God allows things to come our way for his glory. That the thanksgiving of God may bring God glory when we begin to tell it. That means you all that we've got to stop hiding what God is doing in our lives. Hallelujah. You've got to let the world know that God is a redeemer. Hallelujah. So that they'll know that he still redeems. You've got to let the world know that God is a healer. Hallelujah. So that the world will know that God still heals. You've got to let the, the world know that God is a way maker. Hallelujah. Because he's made a way for you. Hallelujah. And since God is not a respecter of persons, he'll do the same for someone else. But you've got to tell it. Hallelujah. It says that uh, through thanksgiving of uh, many redound to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So good trouble is good because it forces you to let the world know that my God is all that he said that he's going to be. Not only is there purpose in my trouble. Hallelujah. Because there's purpose in my trouble there's also power in my trouble as well. Look at verse number 16 where the Bible declares for which cause we faint not. How is it that we're still standing here today. Hallelujah. At the a quick detour from reading because we faint not in the times of adversities, in the times of difficulties. Hallelujah. I should have been consumed. Hallelujah. I should have been destroyed. It looked like I was not going to make it. When my soul was overwhelmed, it looked like the rock was nowhere near and that I was not going to make it to the rock. But because God's purpose for my life is that he would get the glory out of my suffering. Because God's purpose in my life is that, that he would get the glory out of me living hallelujah there's power in the times of trouble hallelujah there's power knowing that God is who he said that he's going to be he says that I did not faint hallelujah I should have fainted hallelujah because of the difficulties that came my way I should have thrown in the towel oh God hallelujah when the enemy came up against me like a flood I, I should have given up hope oh God when everybody left me and I was all by myself but which cause we faint not and so that God would get the glory. It wasn't not you. Hallelujah. It wasn't any good that you've done on your own that you're still standing here today. But it's only because of the grace of God that you're still yet standing. Hallelujah. So the good trouble is, is that God will never leave you. The good trouble is that God would never forsake you. The good trouble is that God will be true to his word. There's power in your trouble. Let me keep reading. For which cause we find Think not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That takes me back to the couple of verses. Go back with me uh, to verse number, hallelujah, verse number seven. Hallelujah. Keeping the verse number eight. God, stay right there. Verse number eight. Let me read verse number 16 again. For which cause we faint not. Hallelujah. I'm talking about trouble. Trouble comes our way and it sometimes causes people to faint. Hallelujah. It causes some people to give up hope. Hallelujah. It causes some people to throw in the towel because they're not they're not holding on to God. But look what Paul told them earlier 
in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, but we are troubled on every side. Hallelujah. Yet not distressed. He says, we are uh, perplexed, but not in uh, despair. He says, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. Hallelujah. How is it in the name of Jesus that I'm troubled on every hand? Hallelujah. But I have not fainted yet. Hallelujah. How is it that I'm perplexed? I don't understand what God is doing, but I still have not fainted yet. Hallelujah. How is it that we are troubled on every side and persecuted, but I have not fainted? You've got to know it's not by power for you for you to have done it. It won't be by your might. Help me, Holy Ghost. But it's because of the Spirit of God that you're still standing here today. It's because of the grace of God that you're still standing today. It's because of the love of God and the plans that he has for your life. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus that you're still standing here today. Though you may be going through heartaches and, and though you may be going through pain, yes, your body may be wearing down, but day after day, God renews your strength. Hallelujah. And they that wait upon the Lord, the Bible reminds us, shall renew their strength. It tells us that we shall mount up with wings as eagles. How is it that we can mount up with wings as eagles when we're so overwhelmed and we're dealing with heartaches on every hand and, and we're dealing with trials in our lives. But when we trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not into our own understanding in all of our ways, if we acknowledge God, if the Bible tells us he shall direct our pathways, what we've got to understand is God came that we might have life. And not that we might live, but that we might live life that there more abundantly. So we faint, hallelujah, sometimes. But which cause we do not faint. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because the Lord God is on our side. And though our bodies, our outward man may perish, the inward man is being renewed day after day. Yes, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We have a promise that's inside of us. And that promise gives us power. Uh, Acts 1 and 8 says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be a witness unto me. Yes, we are here to be a witness. When trials come your way, God wants you to be a witness. When heartache comes your way, God wants you to be a witness. When the devil comes against you like a flood, God wants you to be a witness because it's not about you. It's not about you. The things that you're going through is not about you, but the purpose is for, for God's glory. And the power to make it is because of God's glory. And the way to make it is because God's promises for us. They are yea and amen. So Paul went on a little bit further, and I got to get up out of here now. Go with me to verse number 18. We find that there's promise in our trouble as well. Purpose in our trouble. Because we face tribulations, but it works together for our good. There's power in our our trouble because when we should have fainted we have not fainted because of the grace and power of God but then in verse number 18 it reminds us that there's something more that there's a promise in our trouble Paul says in verse number 17 he says for our light afflictions which but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory there shall be glory after this we stand on the promises of God that when things come our way that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven there's a time to live and a time to die a time to pluck up and a time to plant there's a time for everything that we deal with in our lives but this is our time and this is our season that God will work miracles on our behalf you got to understand this that Paul when Paul said that these light afflictions are only for a moment. Paul went through a whole bunch of afflictions. Look at what Paul went through. Paul was beaten with stripes because he wanted to do right. Paul was thrown in prison because he chose to live right. Paul was beaten up all night long because he wanted to preach the gospel. Paul was stoned only because he wanted to do those things that are right. Paul was shipwrecked and he went to shore on broken pieces. He went through a whole bunch of stuff. He was even robbed. Someone tried to kill him. He was hated by his own people and hated by the Gentiles. But through it all, hallelujah, Paul said, I learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I learned to trust in God. His problems and his troubles, what they had to do is they had to work together for God's glory. And you've got to know the trouble that you're dealing with and the things that you're going through. What they're doing is working something good out of you. 
They're working something good out of you. So James told them when you go through trouble, he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you go through a whole bunch of trouble. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations because knowing this, that the trying of your faith, it worketh patience. When you go through, it produces something in you. The more you go through, the stronger you become. You would have never known that you can be great if you had never faced difficulties in your life. You would have never known that God was a healer if he never healed your body. You would have never known that God was a way maker if he never made a way for you. So every time that you go through, it's an opportunity for God to show himself strong and to show himself mighty. You've got to know that all things work together for your good. And when you go through, it's good trouble. When you overcome, it's because of good trouble. When you got dealing with things that are there to kill you, they're not there to destroy you, but they're there to make you focus in on God. It's amazing to me. Instead of looking at things like they're there to kill you, we've got to put on the eyes of Christ. we got to put on the eyes of Christ and begin to understand what we see is not what we see. But we've got to learn how to hear the voice of God in the midst of calamities and in the midst of trials. Trouble, bad trouble, caused Abram to, 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 to do God wrong and, 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 and decide he was going to help out God. And that ended up causing the birth of Ishmael. Do you not know that when you try to help God, it causes long-term disappointment? Ishmael is still causing issues for Isaac today. But when he decided that he was going to allow good trouble to come his way, he had to wait 25 years for the promise. But guess what? 25 years later, the promise came to pass and God gave him Isaac. Bad trouble caused Moses to kill the Egyptian. Hallelujah. And it caused him to be banished to Midian. But good trouble caused him to do something great that freed the children of Israel out of captivity. Bad trouble caused uh, David to look at Bathsheba and cover her and sleep with her and then led to him killing Uriah. But good trouble had him repent and said, God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And now David is known as one of the greatest a man after God's own heart. Trouble is not meant to destroy you. It just depends on where you're getting in trouble at. When you're allowing your flesh to lead you, when you're allowing your flesh to guide you, bad trouble is always going to lead to destruction. But when you do the things that are right in the eyesight of God, and you make God your priority, he still allows trouble your, come your way. But we as people of God and as the believers of God can stand on this promises. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. That was Romans 8 and 28. But if you go back couple of verses to Romans 8 and 18 it reminds us that the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed what I stopped by here on this morning to remind you and let you know stop looking at what it looks like stop being concerned about what others are saying Stop worrying uh, that things are not working together for your good. There is a promise that God has made to us. And God is not like man that he will lie. Nor is he like the son of man that you have to repent. So keep on laboring. Keep on pressing on. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up hope today. Hallelujah. Because the king of kings, the king of glory, he's going to come through. The king of kings, the king of glory is going to show himself strong. The king of kings and the Lord of lords, he's going to come in and make a way you just got to hold on and allow good trouble to run its course it has to work it has to work together in for your good because it's not meant to kill you it's purpose driven it has power behind it and along with it comes a promise the promise is I will never leave you I will never forsake you I will be with you until the end of the world. We thank God for good trouble today. Good trouble is things that we can count on God, turning them around and making them work together for our good. So I end with, while we we look not on things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, because the things that are seen are temporal. 
but the things that are not seen are for eternal weight of glory. Resting on your feet on this morning, every head bowed and every eye closed. God's going to bless you for your press. God's going to bless you for your press. Paul wrote, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And at the end of the day, all of it comes our way so that we can experience the weight of glory. I needed to encourage someone today who may be going through, who may be dealing with difficulties in life, who may be struggling with the circumstances of life. It's not the same as what it was like before you came into knowing Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's not the same trouble because the trouble when you were in the world, it only led to more trouble. But when you're dealing with Christ as your Savior, as the King of Kings and as the Lord of Lords, the trouble he allows to come your way is so that you will be able to experience a greater weight of God's glory. So the troubles that you're dealing with is so that God will be able to show you his glory in, in your life. So when trouble comes your way, the psalmist said, hold your head up high and begin to declare, hallelujah. Learn how to praise him in the midst of your trouble. Learn how to adore him in the midst of your trouble. Even in the midst of the hospital visit, even in the midst of the bad report, even in the midst of the, the bank statement not matching, tell the enemy, hallelujah, anyhow. I'm not going to allow you devil to get me down, but when trouble comes my way, I'm going to continue to hold my head up high and say, hallelujah. That means that I'm giving God the greatest glory that I can in spite of my, is there is anybody in the house that dares to say hallelujah, anyhow, hallelujah, anyone online would bold, be bold enough to declare and let the enemy know hallelujah, anyhow, hallelujah, because it's going to work. Remind yourself, it's going to work. And we know it's got to work because God's not like men and he lies. He's not a liar, but he's true to his word. Hold on. It's just a season. This too shall pass. There shall be glory after this. Just keep on sowing. Do season is on, on its way. Keep on seizing the moment. Hallelujah. Do season is on its way. Hallelujah. It may have caused you to stumble, but it could not kill you because only God has the authority to take life from you. And as long as you're still yet breathing, there's still hope. He still hears your prayers. He still hears your cries. He's still going to answer by and by. Just keep, don't stop praying. Don't stop praising. God hears you. God sees you. And God knows. Keep on sowing. Due season is coming. Just don't faint. Good trouble is going to work out for your good. Good trouble is going to work together for your good. It produces an anointing. It yields an oil that can never run dry. An olive plant, olive seed, it bears oil, but it has to go through a long process to produce oil. It goes through some crushing and breaking and, and battering, but it produces the oil that covers and anoints and refreshes and revives. These things that you're dealing with are there just to produce the oil that you need for your next season. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to declare what thus said the Lord, what you gave me to share with the people today. Before we knew you, trouble always ended up negatively. It was a negative thing. 
But when you came into our lives, you changed the narrative. Hallelujah. Trouble did not lead to condemnation, but if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You made us new. And you gave us a different outlook. You gave us a different focus. And you gave us a different purpose in ministry. Hallelujah. We were once outcast, but when we got into relationship with you and we became into fellowship with you, God, we were no longer outcast, but now we become joint heirs with Christ. And your word tells us that if they hated you, that they're going to hate us as well. And so, God, help us, help us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to not be weary and well doing. Good trouble is going to work together for our good. So help us to stand on your promises. Help us to stand on your word. Help us to not continue to look at what we see, but actually what we know. And we know, I keep going back to that because that is the confirmation of our faith. And we know, I don't care what nobody else says. I know who God is. I don't care what anybody else does. I know who my redeemer is. I don't care what you think. I know what God can do and what he's done for others he can do for you as well help us to stand on your word help us to stand on your promises help us to put our trust in you and you will turn our good trouble and work it together for our good bless the hearers of your word let us not be hearers only but doers of your word as well bless us oh God today keep us in the heart of your hand and the center of your will. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to our worship service here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. We pray that something was said or done that encouraged you, that empowered you, that strengthened you on this day. Now it is time for us to give you an opportunity to sow into the life of ministry here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. And there are multiple ways that you can give. First, you can give via Cash App by giving to Dollar Praise Center VA. You also can visit our website, praisecenterkojic.org. Click on the giving link and it will allow you to give via our website. You also can go to PayPal for those that like to use PayPal and send your donation to info at praisecenterkojic.org. And then last but not least, you can give via Givelify by searching for Praise Center Church of God in Christ in Dumfries, Virginia. Make sure you see my face or Lady Yo's face on the image and you will be giving or donating to the right location. We pray again that you were blessed by our service and we want to let you know by you seeding into the life of Praise Center Church of God in Christ. We're going to declare blessings be upon you. God says, when we give, it shall be given unto us good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We speak blessings to be in your life as you have sown into good soil here at Praise Center Church. May God bless you and may heaven shine upon you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.